Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Nemo Propaganda here. You know I review a lot of subwoofers with respect to their performance with two-channel music. Um, today we have three fairly large ported subwoofers. Look at this tower. It's kind of majestic looking. I damn near broke my back setting this thing up, so I hope you guys appreciate it. On the screen behind me, we have one of my favorite YouTubers, Shadow Elite HD. If you're wondering why I got his page up in the background instead of mine, I'll be honest, when I was setting up this video and I put up my own page back there, it just felt like a little bit self-centered. So I was like, man, I'm gonna put someone else's YouTube channel up there. So if you like JRPGs, I love this dude's content. It's pretty cool. I don't even know him or nothing like that. I just kind of wanted to throw it up there. Anyway. I have reviewed each one of these subwoofers individually, so if you want to see more in-depth tech talk and on their performance and things like that and comparisons, feel free to check out those individual videos. I will link them in the description below. The purpose of this video is really to just kind of give you my final thoughts and wrap up of these three ported subwoofers with respect to two-channel music performance. Um, I'll tell you like kind of what I like about each one, what I don't like about each one, and I'll try to build like a customer profile for each one, like who each one is for, and then which one is for me, right? And then we'll wrap it up. So we have the RSL Speedwoofer 10S, 400 bucks, 10 inch driver. We have the Emotiva RS11, $1,200 11 inch driver, and the Rhythmic FVX12, uh, $949 12 inch driver. So it's kind of funny because it's like 10, 11, 12 inch driver. I didn't plan that, that's just kind of how it worked out. So, um, I know a lot of you might be thinking, you know, ported subwoofers, you know, two-channel music, I thought we're not really supposed to do that. You're right, we're really not supposed to do that because generally speaking, ported subwoofers, they got a little bit of overhang, they're a little bit slower to respond, um, and their bass note distinction is generally speaking not that good when it's compared to their sealed counterparts. However, these three subwoofers do not suffer from those ailments, and that's why we have them here because I consider all three of these subwoofers very good for two channel music or mixed systems. So we're gonna get into it. So let's start with the RSL Speedwoofer 10S at the top. 400 bucks, 10 inch driver, 350 watts. You're getting a whole hell of a lot for your money. The few reasons that I like it is, you're <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy. It's like 400 bucks, it's like, it's not a lot. Like I understand, like, as far as like value for money, like 50 bucks is a lot of money, right? But for what you're getting for 400 bucks, it's kind of impressive what they've done here. Um, so what I, one of the things I really do like about the RSL Speedwoofer 10S is just the price. I mean, 800 bucks for a pair, 400 bucks for one, you kind of can't go wrong there. Not only that, it's fairly compact for a ported design and it plays more like a sealed subwoofer with respect to like speed and transients and things like that. So it doesn't come with a port plug, nor does it need one. It is pretty good. Um, I will say it does have a bit of a mid bass bump, which gives it a combination of tactile bass and very low frequency bass thanks to the port. So it's a cool combination of sounds and I think a lot of people are gonna love it. In short, this is my wrap up and who the 10S is for. If 400 bucks is the most money you can spend on a subwoofer or 800 bucks is the most you can spend on a pair of subwoofers, I don't think you can do better than the RSL Speedwoofer 10S. It's about as far as your dollar can get you. Now, what do I not like about the RSL Speedwoofer 10S? Well, I do wish we had a upgraded finish option and I can understand why there isn't one like a gloss black or a matte black or just something painted because it's a value item. And I, I can see how RSL might think hey, if we put like a piano gloss on here or like a matte black finish, it's gonna add $100 to the retail price. It's gonna push it up to something like the SVS SB1000 and people might be cross shopping too much there and we're gonna lose some market share. I can understand why they might think that. I don't think that's the case because even the SVS SB1000, the painted finish is another $100 more, which would make it 600 bucks. So the, if the RSL Speedwoofer 10S had a nicer finish for like 100 bucks or like 80 bucks more, I think it would still be very competitive and a lot of people would like that. Um, so yeah, great sub. Uh, again, the, the value, it's, it's one of those things that like continues to blow me away. Every time I set it up and I listen to it, I'm just like, man, I wish something that good was available when I was like a broke 17 year old. Do you guys wanna know what I was using for a subwoofer when I was 17 and didn't have any money? I had a Pyramid 12 inch driver that I bought from the swap meet think some of you might know what I'm talking about. I don't think that brand's around anymore. 
And then I had a 12 inch car audio subwoofer box I pulled out of the trash. It was broken like someone had taken a hammer to like the back side of it. And I just filled all of that in with glue. And then what I was using to power it was a like vintage Yamaha amplifier. And to cut the high frequencies out of the subwoofer, I used a spool of copper enamel to just act as like, a, I guess that would be like an air core inductor, if you will. Really ghetto shit over here, guys. That's what I was doing at 17 to, to set up a subwoofer in my room because like I didn't have a whole lot of money. And back then, there was no like $400 subwoofer that sounded good. I'm 38, so that was 21 years ago. Is my math right? Yeah, the, wow. Anyway, so that's the RSL Speedwoofer 10S. Moving down, the Emotiva RS11, $1,200. Um, what I like about this is going to be the painted finish, the matte black. I did not realize how much I would like this kind of finish until I put my eyes on it. It is fantastic. It's beautiful. I want to see other brands start using a finish like this. I love it. Um, the, sorry. I just ran up, up and down the stairs like eight times, so like I'm a little bit winded. And anyway, so you don't care. Let's get back to the subwoofers. So the Emotiva, uh, Emotiva RS11. I like that it has top mounted controls. I like that it has chassis mounted RCAs around back as well. Um, the size of the Emotiva RS11 I would say is very good as well. As you can see, it's only just a little bit bigger than the Speedwoofer 10S. It's just a little bit taller and about maybe one inch or an inch and a half more uh, in depth. So this is again going to be really good for anyone with a space constraint. Um, a lot of people I think want something like the SVS PB2000, but it's too big. It's really deep. It's more like the Rhythmic FVX12 we have down here. So the RS11 being a ported 11 inch driver and being, as you can see, quite a bit shorter with respect to depth than something like the FVX12 or SVS PB2000, I think slots right in the middle because I do get a lot of comments for people that are like, you know, should I get like a ported sub? Like I really want a ported sub like the PB2000 Pro, but like it's just like too deep and I'm worried like a SB2000 won't have like the low end authority that I'm looking for. Well, here we have Emotiva RS11. It is a couple hundred bucks more, but you do get a very nice finish on it. Um, and it is quite overbuilt. Um, you are getting a cast basket, a three inch voice coil, and a huge motor section. I love SVS, but you are not getting that with the PB2000 or SB2000. Now, granted, with the subwoofers, you do get some other cool things, which I talked about in their video. Anyhow, the Emotiva RS11 is cool because if you want that straight up ported subwoofer, sound, you just play it as is without the uh, included foam plug and it's going to play really well. It does play a little bit quicker with respect to transients, speed and responsiveness than a typical ported subwoofer. So I did like that quite a bit. It extends quite low and does have a lot of authority. But if you want to switch to two channel music only, you just put in this foam plug that goes right in here. And honest to God, like that, you have a sealed subwoofer but it will still extend fairly low and have quite a bit of authority down low, so that's pretty cool. Moving to, oh, well, so like who is it for? I guess I already said that. Anyone who's like, you know, in between, who like, I guess wants a ported sub, but can't accommodate the size, so you're looking at a sealed sub, but you're not sure that's gonna have enough, Emotiva RS11 is a great choice for that. Um, moving down to the Rhythmic FVX12. I like this one. So, uh, I like all of them, honestly. And by the way, just so we're clear, all three of these, very overbuilt drivers, cast baskets, huge motor sections, large voice coils. It is quite impressive. I've looked at all three of these drivers and I was very impressed. Rhythmic FVX 12, $949, 12 inch driver. What I like about it is its sound quality from top to bottom is going to rival something like RHEL. Um, it's definitely not as good looking as a RHEL subwoofer. Let's make no mistake of that. Uh, nor does it have like the fit, finish and attention to detail you'll find with RHEL, like the polished hardware around back and things like that. However, the sound quality is on par. It just is that good. Its mid bass articulation is phenomenal. Its bass note distinction is very good as well. It has extension for days as well as output for days and tons of authority and articulation. It is of the three the best with respect to sound quality, extension, output. Essentially what I'm saying here, it is the best sounding. What I don't like about the Rhythmic FVX12 is how deep it is. It is the largest of the bunch. You can clearly see that here. So not 
everyone can accommodate the size. The second thing I don't like about the Rhythmic FVX 12 is the finish. There is no like fancier finish available. And I can understand that in some ways, but not in others. Like with the RSL Speedwoofer 10S, I accept that it comes with like a vinyl wrap only finish because it is a bargain product. The Rhythmic FVX12 also is a bargain product, even though it's more than double the price at $949, because what you're getting for that $949 is quite a hell of a lot. But I do think a lot of people would happily pay a hundred bucks or so more to have something more like Emotiva's matte finish on the FVX12. I know I would, it's a great look. And with vinyl finishes, I personally, where I get worried is I get worried they're not gonna hold up to the test of time. Not all vinyl finishes are created equal. I will admit Emotiva's vinyl finish they use on their SE12, it's pretty heavy duty. I can't see that really coming apart, but no one else seems to use that. I don't know if it's their own vinyl finish they made themselves or what, but that thing is super heavy duty. Most subwoofers don't have that heavy duty of a vinyl finish that Emotiva uses on their cheaper subs. If Rhythmic gave us that, I'd be like a little bit cooler with that, or just give us a painted option for like a hundred bucks more. I would love the hell out of that. Anyhow, I digress. If I haven't already said it, all three of these subs can play low. Tons of extension, tons of authority down there. Play loud. None of them are monotone. None of them are boomy. You know what I mean? They all have good bass note distinction. Um, but let's be clear about a few things like the RSL Speedwoofer 10S being so much cheaper will be outclassed with respect to overall output and extension and sound quality by the more expensive Emotiva RS11 and Rhythmic FVX12. But for how cheap it is, there is nothing better. It is really good for the money. Each one of these subwoofers is worth their asking price. So which one would I pick? This is a tough one for me. I like the Speedwoofer 10S, but my sound system sits around $13,000. And while the Speedwoofer 10S isn't wildly out of place in my sound system, it is not the best match. And I'm fairly confident if anyone here called RSL and said, you know, I've got a $13,000 sound system. You think the RSL Speedwoofer 10S would be good for me? They'd probably be like, order it. We've got an in-home trial, send it back if you don't like it. But I don't think they designed it for people that have sound systems over $10,000. So that brings us to these two. I really like the RS11 because of the size. You guys know I'm huge on aesthetics. I don't like big things. It's one of the reasons I use bookshelf speakers as opposed to towers. I like the aesthetic of bookshelves more. The Emotiva RS11 just looks better in the room. The paint finish looks much more luxurious and more high end. And these like kind of like cuts we have on the front baffle, it's the same look as the rest of the air mode of range. And while I didn't love it on their speakers, I love it on the subwoofer. When it's on the floor, it helps give the subwoofer a smaller look. So I really like that. But the sound of the FVX12, that mid bass articulation being just so freaking good. And like, I'm like torn between like, form factor and looks versus like outright performance only. You know what I mean? It's like what I want, you know, like something like, God, I can't even think of a car analogy, damn. So let me give you the, this is the biggest difference I can tell you between these two. Cause again, this is like for me trying to think which one would be for me. So the Emotiva RS11 is really good for dual duty because with that port plug, it becomes a sealed subwoofer, great for music. With the plug removed, fantastic theater performer. I'm not so much into theater, so I don't care about that. I would have the foam plug in there all the time. If I'm gonna use it that way, some of the benefits are not gonna be used by me, so let's go down to the FVX12. With one port closed, it performs as the speed and transience of a sealed subwoofer, all the mid bass articulation of a rail and the extension and output of a subwoofer its size should have. The only thing I don't like is the size and finish, but the bass that comes from the Rhythmic FVX12 is more like coming from the background versus from the subwoofer itself. And that is a characteristic I really like. <sighs> I would probably pick the Rhythmic FVX12. 
That's what I think I would pick. It's tough. I honestly, I think it's one of those things like, it depends what day you caught me on. Because it sticks out a little bit more than my rack does. And I'm not the kind of person where like, it's all about the sound for me. The, the looks matter a lot to me too, what it's like when everything's turned off. When everything's turned off, the Emotiva looks a lot better in my system. But when my eyes are closed, the Rhythmic FVX12 sounds better. Ah, yeah, this is a tough one. You know what the cool thing is? I actually own the sealed version of this, the F12 SE, and that's like really what I use. So I don't even have to pick one if I'm being completely honest. That kind of solves my problem. Um, the Rhythmic F12 SE is about the size of this, just a little bit less depth, in fact, 12 inch driver, and that's what I use actually. So anyhow, this is my final thoughts and wrap up of these subwoofers. Each one is fantastic. Um, if you have any questions, ask in the comments below. I think each one of these is gonna be great for a mixed system um, or a music only system. By the way, I do uh, game as well. And when I game, I use my subwoofers and these are all good for that kind of stuff also. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Until next time, later.